Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I explore the use of the Dynetics Lander in place of the ILV on SLS with Orion in sort of a Saturn V style lunar landing. So we had previously done that with the national team Blue Origin Northrop ILV. This time it's the Dynetics Lander and it has unique complications, the drop tanks in particular so I have to use my little Canada tug to grab the drop tanks, put them on the lander uh, so that we can do that. But that means that the stage is going to have to push the Canada tugs along. I mean, we probably don't have to have this much fuel, to be honest. Um, so we'll underfuel the Canada tugs. But yeah, it's going to have to push them along to the moon and then we'll arrange everything. So maybe not the best way to go, but we'll see. And also, there's sort of a different balance to things here in that we've got more structural mass on this, so it's got a higher dry mass by my estimates. We don't know the exact, but uh, looking at the structure of it and trying to estimate, it seems to have more structural mass. The cabin is probably a little bit bigger than the ILV version, and so I've accounted for that. And so... Its structural mass is heavier, but it's using a more efficient fuel. It's using methane and oxygen. So it could have enough. It might not have enough, but we'll see. I've underfueled it because otherwise SLS can't lift it and Orion at the same time. We could switch things up. We could actually underfuel Orion's service module and fully fuel these and have the methane and oxygen do the capture burn around the moon. So that's an option as well. So there are various options. We'll try this version where I'm fueling this to uh, this level, I guess. Is that 70%? Um, yeah, I think that's 70%. And then uh, this, these tanks are being fueled to 90%. And we'll see how that goes. Yep. So I've got the MLI layers, but I don't know how well they'll work. And plenty of questions. So we'll just try it out and see. That's how it goes. So, on to the launch pad. Okay, so here we go. And if Jeb, Bob, Bill, and Val look at all apprehensive, it's because they've already died, right, on the last try because of the parachutes on Orion. I hope I've fixed that. I've fixed Orion in a number of ways we'll talk about. But there's no guarantees those work wise. My throttle not going all the way up. Um, Okay, hopefully it's okay now. Um, we don't want it randomly thralling down. Okay, well, anyway, ignition. And launch. The payload may be a little bit heavier than last time, so we'll see how it goes. We remember it wasn't quite enough for uh, the EUS wasn't doing quite enough. Some people suggested SLS Block 2, but until they give money for SLS Block 2, I have zero faith that it's even going to happen, so I don't care. They've actually paid for some EUSs and SLSs, so we will assume that that's going to happen at least, but I don't even know what kind of boosters they would have for Block 2, really. so. If I'm gonna speculate about more powerful boosters, I'll just slap my Raptor flyback boosters on. So I tried to fix the Orion's RCS, which wasn't quite working. I uh, Somebody suggested enabling crossfeed, so I just told it to enable crossfeed at the start in the configuration. Um, I fixed the little vernier thrusters, made them just RCS thrusters instead of engines. And... Um, the, I removed the reaction wheel. It turns out the original configuration for SLS had two reaction wheels on it. That's why it had that problem. So, just removed one of those. I increased the deployment time for the parachutes. I, oh yes, add descent mode to the Orion. Now, all of these might be fixed in the version of this SLS Orion mod if you got more recent version. I'm still using one from 1.3.1. I know it's been updated for 1.8.1 so 
It's just uh, me using the wrong version, and so these things might already be fixed, for all I know. It doesn't actually show the thrust going down here. Well, separation. That's weird. Okay, that's probably not supposed to be doubled up. Off goes the launch escape system. So, we're in the last 40 or so seconds of the SLS core burn. And this is an adequate demonstration of how far out it gets. So we can't... Uh, somebody had talked about uh, replacing it with Super Heavy you can't because Super Heavy can't get back home from this distance. So and they wouldn't survive a barge landing or anything so that is not an option unless you want to have a super heavy death on your hands uh, using Starship as the core remember Starship is about the same as an SLS core but using Starship as the, as the core requires you to fit the payload including EUS in the bay which it can't fit um, you could I thought about making a longer Starship with a longer front end but um, it's payload capacity, well, we'll have to see. So... Okay, separation. And that always blows up. And, uh, hope... Okay, good. No, I was gonna lie, there's three decouplers there, that shouldn't happen. Oh, those are the panels. Okay, well, hopefully the panels are attached right. Okay, yeah, they're going off properly. All is well. But we will be short of the amount that we need to transfer to the moon. That was just going to happen. This is a little bit heavier than the previous payload. So. Okay, and. That's good enough. 247 by 166. Okay, and we can get the solar panels out. Yeah, manifestly less delta-v than we had before. Okay, that's a good enough approach without the mid-course adjustments, so... Burn times are still not correct. That's just how it is right now. Uh, well, it's not really turning fast enough. Come on, come on. Alright, close enough. Ignition. Okay, almost done with this stage. And yeah, we're not quite gonna make it. Okay. Well, no, we probably don't need to do that. We're gonna need to do a whole lot more than that. But first... Okay, um, yep, yeah, let's... We'll have to replot this anyway. Separation of those panels. Okay, and really the top bit should also decouple. I don't know how it would balance anyway. Okay, so now we're going to dock this to here. Alright, RCS. Okay, we've got some RCS. We will move a little bit further away. It's gonna be a little bit dicey trying to get this out from between those two tanks, though. I hope that nothing goes wrong. Okay, we connected. So that's thing number one. Now the more dicey thing number two. Okay, it didn't blow up. So <laughs> that's a good start. Still controlling from here. Um, there we go. Okay, it's tug time. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. The color on the tug is gone for some reason. I'll have to check the... the files. It, it should have color, it shouldn't be just... gray. Okay, well, it's attached. So, decouple. And we'll 
control from here. It's a little bit awkward. You know, this probably wasn't the best place to attach it. <laughs> Come to think of it. Maybe should have put it side to side alongside the docking port. A little tug number two, please. Well, using one tug is not a good idea, generally speaking. Okay, we got a hold of it. So now there's two of them, and let's make sure those RCS extend. And let's try and get it on. So control from here now. And there's a docking port there. Now, obviously this is not the intention of the Dynetics team. I mean, they, they weren't intending for me to do this like this. This is understood that this is unlikely to ever happen. Okay. All right, first external tank on. And we will release tug number one. Oop, it really flopped off. And tug number one will go back to the EUS to, wow, it stumbled off to the other side. That's not super helpful. Okay, we've connected. Okay, where did Orion go? There. I'll just go with this control point. Oh, as it's going along, we can go ahead and get the other tug. Okay, we are totally connected, and let's control from here and bring it in, finally. Well, just getting this all together has been a minor ordeal, but here we are, getting close to it. I mean, you can see how far up we are, so our, our adjustment to get to the moon is quite delayed and probably not optimal. Okay, well, it's connected. All right, let's get rid of the tugs. And now we have decisions to make again. Who gets to do what, right? We've got methane and oxygen over here. Lots of it. And we've got the hypergolic fuels in the Orion service module. Which one does this correction right here that we need? Uh, it's gonna cost a bundle as you can see 400 Well, let me uh, activate this engine It's got 500 total so let's just use the methane and oxygen over here and see what happens So I'm gonna shut that off And we're going to activate this thing's engines But we'll actually use the RCS on the Orion side this time. Last time we did it the other way around. But this time we'll use the Orions. So we want to control from here. Okay. Correction burn underway. Well, it turns out that I have my fuel priority wrong. I have no idea if after this we're going to have enough for landing. Now, obviously, before this we had enough for landing, but... It's now complicating matters. Maybe we should just keep the service module here to just enough fuel to come back and then have the landers do everything else. Not sure, though. With the ILV, it's, I mean, it'd be using a BE-7 engine, which is, you know, very efficient. But then again, uh, the stage doesn't have that much delta V. So it's complicated. Clearly, each of these landers will require a different strategy. The ILV one turned out all right. Okay, that's that burn. That's a good enough periapsis. We can probably lower that a little bit. And yep, we'll work with that. 
So on to the moon. And I do have MLI layers here, but I don't trust the Voilov, so we will turn away from it temporarily while this is on its way. Okay, we are approaching the moon, but it's really, really dark around here. And I don't know if the moon is going to be visible or not. We'll see, you know, what happened in the previous video where the moon wasn't quite, quite there. We'll find out. We're pretty close. Oh, we can see some there. There we go. There's the moon. And we have a certain amount of this fuel that we get to use, so we'll just use it. Okay, we've captured. We'll probably come around for another burn. But we'll do what we can here first. Okay, that'll have to do. Don't know how the oxygen gets so low so quickly. It should have been on par with the food, at least. It should be the one to drain quickest, but somehow it seems to. Uh, just in case something goes awry, I'm gonna... Okay, and yeah, the wastewater, we can have a wastewater dump, why not? Waste is more peculiar, but wastewater dump is definitely standard. All right, we'll come around again. Okay, and once again, the limit is 1,500 on the MMH and Mon 3 is what I'm looking at. But what we need to reserve for the trip home. Okay, I'll cut it there. So actually a little bit, whoops. A little bit lower of an orbit than we had before. It's a less than four hour orbit and that's because we had used this side the lander's fuel in order to do the correction. Okay well anyway um, we can transfer two Kerbals. Well uh, Val and Bob did well last time right? Okay I guess we can deploy those little landing legs that we've got. Not the most convincing things I've ever made, but okay. Um, well, guess we'll see. Yeah, we've got the solar panels on top of it. So, undock. The other side. Not, no, not you. Other side. And control from here. Okay, so we don't really know how much delta V we have uh, altogether. This is a lie, 6,582, that's obviously a lie. This 4,477 might be the truth. Um, could see that, could see that being the case. So that's going to be interesting because I don't know if we can get back up here with 4,477. When you think about it, here's four, uh, 2,000 meters per second we're going at, right? That means we have to kill all of that and then come back to 2,090. So right there, without even taking the landing bit into consideration or the gravity losses, you're talking about 4,180. So we may not be able to do this. We'll see. Okay. But let's set up for it. Okay, dropping our periapsis with the RCS. Well, we might not, not have a whole lot of light where we're landing. Okay, well, let's activate the engine and give it a try. Keep an eye on the fuel in the drop tanks. Okay, overall things are well managed. Suppose we could purge carbon dioxide. 
Well, the carbon dioxide isn't going away particularly fast, unfortunately. And we are getting ready to drop the drop tanks. We'll see if that works out. Okay, drop tanks, drop. Drop. Okay, they are being dropped. Technically, we can get rid of these docking ports as well. Oh, well, we can point more decisively retrograde, considering the suicide burn countdown. I feel like mech jab attitude adjustments... I don't know, it's wiggly, so... It has too much max stopping time, I don't know. Okay, and why don't we dump that little bit of wastewater? Alright. This is a very formidable angle at this point. Let's make sure we've got the ground height. I want to keep about five seconds. Okay, I'm gonna switch to SAS. Oop. SAS. Okay. Whoa. Oh, am I gonna have to restart the engine? Let's see. I think so. Oh shoot, I did it too early. Oh, 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 no, 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 just stay there, stay there, stay there. Sorry, it's really shady. Okay, well, that would have busted a few engines, but all right, RCS off. It's not really a great amount to do the rendezvous, I'll be honest. Uh, but we'll try, you know. And again, I'm not doing the flag bit. Even though I think they could just hop up into it. I guess we could just make sure that EVA is possible. Okay, EVA is possible. And you can see it's a human-sized door there. That's why the Kerbal is only about half of it. So that is possible. I have done that. Okay, so... Rendezvous info... Uh, heading to target 297.2. Okie dokie. So, RCS back on and go. Whoa, 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 why are you wiggling so much? Stop that. It's not helping our Delta V situation. We'll get into orbit first. Maybe Orion will have to risk some of its own fuel to get to us. Did I put gimbling on these? Nope. I really don't like the RCS puffing so much. I'm gonna put caps lock on. I think more use of caps lock and fine controls might have saved us some. Okay, we're getting the last bit of the orbital burn here. Yeah, that doesn't look particularly good on the Delta V there. Okay, so 66 by 56, 262 meters per second, and... You know, we could meet up with it, but... You can see it's going to take more than what we've got. And there's only a 33 meter per second difference there once we get there, but we can't do this burn. And if we jump to the Orion capsule, we'll see how much it has and how much it can spare if we reserve enough to get back home. But I think we need to rebalance the fuel at the start. Probably pack more of the methane and oxygen and less of the fuel in the service module and see. But then the 
that next lander is gonna do corrections it's gonna have to do um the orbital burn to capture into orbit around the moon and everything uh so here we only have 549 which is weird because i thought we would have more than that because we need more than that to go back home i thought it'd be like 700 or something but maybe if we ditch something or another i don't know that's interesting that's heavier than i thought it was going to be so <laughs> uh, we could always just dump a blater, but uh, I don't know. I assume that uh, the amount of a blater is commensurate with how much mass it's supposed to have. So if we dump a blater, we'd have to add more dry mass to the heat shield to compensate, but I'm not sure. We could check some numbers to see if some mass got accidentally added to things. But yep, yeah, so this attempt, I think, is not good enough. We're going to have to try this again with something changed. So I'll look and see what I can do to get enough delta V. We're talking about, we need some more left over here, but more importantly, I think we need mm, 250 more on the lander. So yeah, we are missing that. And we'll see how I managed to do that, I suppose. So look forward to another attempt with this system as much as i hate docking the little uh drop tanks with the with the tugs and thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time